How many do we have? Bad uh, guess. Just one. one. Okay. Sure. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, and uh, my name is Michael Knight. I'm one of the co chairs of uh, Parent Council. And uh, our other co chair, Tina Weeb, uh, sadly uh, had to back out uh, due to personal matters. Uh, she might join us a little bit later on. So, uh, Thank you for uh, joining us. Our purpose today is to give you uh, some background information on the, uh, the tenants area uh, review that uh, the school board uh, currently has underway and some of the changes that are going on. And if you have any questions, uh, then feel free to uh, pipe in. Uh, the meeting is going in, is in fact being recorded. Um, and uh, any of your uh, questions and concerns will be uh, forwarded on, on to the uh, school board for review. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention is that uh, the uh, parent council does not have any authority to uh, override any of the school board decisions. We're merely here to uh, advocate and uh, assist uh, with uh, your concerns and how this will directly affect uh, East Elgin Secondary School. <clears throat> If I think. As soon as I get some technical. <laughs> so I, would, I was thinking we would go through the PowerPoint quickly and then back to the. Um, uh, that, that information sheet that you had uh, provided for us. Sure. Windows open. Is the PowerPoint open? Uh, maybe not if we... Up. Yeah. Sorry, folks, not my computer, not my uh, belly wick with this. We'll... So now it's being shared. OK, so now everyone online can see it as well. Great. OK, let me just move this out of the way. One second. Hi, Beth. Can you tell me if you can see this on your screen? Uh, yes, I can. So we'll just go through the slides. OK, good. Yeah, so um, March 1st, there was uh, uh, the review committee meeting. Sometimes I problem with this, so just. I will just do this for you. Uh, Worked fine a minute ago. It did. You, <laughs> it you, broke, it. you broke the presentation. There you go. So uh, uh, they provided a background with us. As you can see, there was an overview uh, of the whole process and a review of the uh, roles and responsibilities of all of the members, which included uh, all of the uh, uh, schools uh, within the, uh, the catchment basin, basin and, and the um, uh, councils therein. Uh, and they presented uh, the initial uh, area review report. Gave us an opportunity for questions and answers. Uh, as I mentioned, I was not there. Um, Tina, uh, my uh, partner, was there. These are the timelines in place uh, that the school board provided uh, beginning with January, early January there. Moving on to uh, March and uh, in typical fashion, uh, there, there's uh, significant time lags uh, in order to uh, properly in the school boards uh, 
opinion to uh, assess the situation. Hello. So as you can see, what they're hoping for is uh, to get some feedback from the meetings here. Uh, they've got deadlines uh, for the reports in May. Review the public feedback uh, uh, during April and May. And do a final uh, um, presentation in June to the Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees do have the uh, the authority to um, to alter and uh, possibly override the uh, decisions of uh, of the school board administration. So hopefully, uh, whatever input that uh, you may have that will filter down to them. Um, will help uh, them to make their decisions. So then of course in September would be the earliest uh, date for uh, implementation. So our key responsibilities uh, right now, as you can, see, you can see, is to gain a thorough understanding of options for this consideration. Document the uh, the concerns that you have and present them back to the uh, school board. Uh, if you have uh, further questions, then we can uh, hopefully obtain some further information. And uh, there will be a report that uh, uh, Tina will uh, produce uh, for for the school board. So here's the. Uh, Current existing attendance areas. And I'm assuming that my eyesight is uh, is the poorest in the room and. Uh, OK. Uh, so our our current concern, yes, is uh, is the Belmont area um, and the primary uh, issue is the uh, student, the current students in the in our catchment that go to uh, Lord Dorchester Elementary School. Those students and families, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit later approximately how many people that uh, that would currently affect uh, by today's uh, uh, enrollment population. Uh, those students will uh, be gravitating uh, away from East Elgin, and uh, the belief is that they will be uh, uh, moving towards Lord Dorchester Secondary School. So in particular, any uh, any families that are within that geographic area would uh, would have a direct concern. An indirect concern for for us as well, though, is uh, is East Elgin Secondary School. Because, uh, of course, student enrollment, the student population as it uh, ebbs and flows then that directly affects the both the staffing and uh, government granting that uh, is provided. So as our enrollment uh, drops, um, our funding drops, staffing drops uh, during my discussions with uh, with school administration. Um, we could anticipate uh, based on the numbers of the current enrollment of the affected uh, elementary school uh, movement could be, um, uh, it, well, it's definitely single digits, but uh, could be double digit uh, loss of uh, teaching staff here. So that's a concern. You know. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of, uh, as I was discussing earlier with the uh, with the administration, is that there's a lot of algorithms involved in uh, in direct funding to the schools and um, teaching staff. It's pretty complicated. It's over. It's well over uh, my understanding. Uh, and I'm a former teacher, so I I don't uh, I don't quite understand. The, uh, the direct implications, but 
uh, because it involves not only the population of, of the school at, at its simplistic level, but can also incorporate things uh, such as uh, programs. So depending on what programs students are taking or not taking, then there may be a need or, or less of a need for, for teachers with, uh, with that expertise or, or numerically speaking. So if that makes sense, yes. Um, I guess I'll just say I'm not. I'm sorry for being late, but don't apologize. You're here. That's the work since the clock. <laughs> I'm not getting home and getting back, so I I don't know who you are and what your position is. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, my name is Michael Knight. Um, I'm one of the co-chairs with the uh, parent council here. Oh. Our other co-chair, Tina Lee. Uh, she was. Uh, Actually, following this uh, and attending the meetings with the school board. So there's no need to be mad at you. You can get mad at me. That's fine. Everybody usually does. Talk to my wife. <laughs> I'm just, I'm um, going to unload on someone. That well, please do, because that's one of the purposes of this type of a meeting is, is <laughs> for us to get input on it. So um, the sad part is that uh, my information, because I didn't attend the meetings, Tina was going to be the spokesperson. Uh, and she at last minute today had a, an emergency and, and couldn't attend. So I'm stepping in to, to uh, fulfill those, those tasks. But sadly, I, I didn't get the information that she did. So I'm pretty much taking things off of discussions that, I, that we've had before the initial uh, meetings uh, took place, as well as my, my uh, discussions with the administration and what I quickly reviewed. Uh, that uh, the school board uh, gave us to to produce and so um, I'm not gonna so but please do no because <laughs> it's important to be vocal because if if people that have authority to make decisions don't hear or or get an express feedback um, even a passionate one then they can't make any decisions because they just assume that everything's happy, right? It's, it's the same in every profession that if management doesn't hear anything bad, then there's an assumption, rightly or wrongly so, that things work. I, so do it. So, so yes, so, yes, this is being recorded and uh, we're live for Beth right now. She's the only Beth Charlton. Welcome, Beth. Thanks. <laughs> um, yes. Potentially, and I say that because I have seen direct historical components to that. I have I, wants to come here. Yes. I, I know I understand. I, I really uh, a close friend of mine, their family, um, four of their children, so it was one year after another, ended up going to four different high schools. And so that was a horrible situation. And uh, now I would hope and was there one of the questions that I that we can ask about is that uh, there would be uh, certain things in place that uh, that uh, could benefit individual families. Like, will they do grandfathering? Because I know that's not. I grew up in Belmont, and yeah. when I was living in Belmont, there was a big debate of whether or not they're going to see Thomas or coming here, mm -hmm. and it was going to be a grandfather system set to that family was full. So because my older sibling came, the rest of us were allowed to follow. So like I have, I have an eight-year-old and I have a son that's going into my here <laughs> in September, and then this is supposed to implicate in 2024. Like that is just going to demolish. Yes, I agree. I, I thoroughly agree. It's and, and, like I said, it's yeah, the vibe, like so. so many things about the school that he was so excited for, and then mm -hmm. you know it might be a little different for my eight-year-old. Because you know, like they're he'll be out of high school and she's just coming in, but still, it's still yeah. like the legacy, you know what I mean? 
Yes, so absolutely, we'll, we'll ensure we've got uh, uh, some of the uh, council members over there as well, uh, taking notes as well as it's being recorded. So we will inquire about uh, grandfathering and whether or not there are allowable uh, uh, special circumstances for for uh, families that uh, that have multiple uh, students yeah. and potential or future students. Things those are those are the important things, and that's what I do want to do. And like he said, I'm not I'm not going to you personally. Oh, please do. That's okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, you <laughs> messenger to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, probably why the school board put us here, is because you know we can uh, yeah we can absorb the initial uh, shock for them. Uh, Personally, I'm not happy with 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 change because I'm an old guy. I like <laughs> I like conservative. Yeah. So, but I do understand that at a certain point in time, um, that changes do have to be made, and, and I have observed that personally. Uh, schools that uh, there's a school that my son is in that uh, uh, my oldest son when he attended. Uh, the student, by the time my youngest got there, the student population had dropped by 50%. Uh, so there was concerns about yeah. all, all the bell concerns. So, so I do understand all of that. Well, and the, and the other thing is, is that he is in depth you know? yeah. And so all of his friends are in home. Everyone, they, they had to, the decision last year to go back to South Dorchester. And some of, a lot of his friends that lived in Belmont went back to South Dorchester. And so now he's not really friends with mm -hmm. them in Belmont. He's friends with everyone in Elmer. And so, like, if that just gets like, yeah, it's just going to be in his brain. You know what I mean? Like, I do. I do. I can also take that into consideration. In all. I'm sure they do. But sadly, uh, as with any type of a corporation, a large, Corporation such as what uh, our school board is, um, a lot of things do boil down to to uh, right. So if if at a certain point in time it does or does not make sense to do something, then the students and staff take a secondary step to that. So in, in a set, I'm just acknowledging that that happens, right? It happens in, in the private sector, it happens in public. Right, but especially with the school kids, you like, need to make noise though, like this. Oh, that's what it is. I came in the yeah. region. So, <laughs> so, so I have to be careful what I say. Because... Okay. But so this was not advertised well. I got <clears> one email. When other things are happening on my child's school, I will get numerous school messenger emails over and over again that there's, I think I've already had two about an upcoming mental health workshop. I'm just very suspicious about the fact that I only got one email and it didn't explain it very well. Not at all. Um, okay. Right. It didn't explain it very well. Um, I get extra emails because of being employed in these things, but I noticed, um, I noticed the boundary thing right away. Um, I also noticed my mother in law saw your funder for the Elmer Free Press little write up. Got me thinking even more. I'm thinking of sports with your probably, I don't know if your son plays sports, but we have Belmont Elmer kids are on the same sports team. Yes. I feel like we're like sisters. I feel like the board is looking as an employee who works in Elgin. Monday is where it's at, and they don't often remember to come out. Yes, so we need to get our friends and family mm -hmm. to get themselves educated on this mm -hmm. because this is not a good turnout, but I don't think that the board did a good job of letting the parents know. I don't, the think, they have I don't even think they understood what's going on because I got one from Lord Dorchester too that didn't even include me. And the children that are attending Sumption Public School who are not going to St. Joe's who are coming to East Elgin next year, those parents had no idea this meeting was happening because they're not officially, they're not here yet because, so they're not getting those emails. They won't start getting those school messenger emails until September. They wanted to go under the radar. So I'm just a little suspicious of how, why this thing is. I'm not surprised that the turnout's failed. It's, that's good. 
So I think yeah. it's we we all have our feelings and we're probably all here because we're not happy. Yeah. We need to gather up some troops. Yeah. And I, yeah. I have a town councilor that I'm taking notes for because I think some of them are town councilors should have been here because this can impact who's gonna move to Elmer. Because if you find or who's even going to move north of Elmer, if you buy a property close to Belmont and you think your child's going to come to East Elgin and play sports between Belmont and Elmer, and then you suddenly find out they're going to get shipped to Dorchester. Yes. So, in quite honestly, so did we. We had contingency plan to move from here and cap. Uh, so, we anticipate. Yeah, the the, the email did not explain. It. Okay, so one of the so some of the things that uh, we will take note to, uh, to send back is that um, does not appear that there was uh, a a lot of information being disseminated to uh, to the the, the school um, parents. Okay, um, B um, a uh, concern regarding the timing and lack of of um, of opportunity, I guess, for for a proper meeting to be held, if you if you want to call it that, a, a, an opportunity to uh, inform the uh, the public a little bit more about what's going on. Um, when I was looking at the timelines, uh, and when we were first told about uh, about having to uh, uh, do this, the timelines that we were given as a council were not that long. But anyway, you know. It was, January or so. Yes. Ah, sorry, Beth. Yes. Let me see if uh, I can. Uh, Becky, how do I uh, get Beth on here? Can you hear me okay? So maybe, yeah. Beth, if you could unmute yeah, yourself, I, I am maybe, because it shows that you, the speaker's on here. Yeah, I am unmuted. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Our sound is off. It's it's our end, Beth. Have okay. have patience. No problem. Um, Are you there, Beth? I am, yeah. Everyone has to have one of these. Beth? Yes, I am here. So one of the so um Perhaps, uh, you know, there should be a request, if not a demand, that uh, we have a second meeting you know, to, to allow an opportunity for people to be more informed about what's going on. We also, yes, sir. Why is, why is there anyone from the board here? Yes. Yeah, and the only thing that they gave us in the initial package was was in a, an attempt to uh, allow us to have a, a discussion without it being whether or not that's but that's good or not. I think it's not silly because if you go to the Thames Valley Can you board, hear me now? sit in that meeting room. Oh, I'm now we hear you. Okay. All right. Okay. Give me one second. Let me see if I can plug in some speakers. Okay. Say something. Sorry, someone else is talking. I'll let them go ahead. Yeah. Okay. If you could hold on for a second, Beth. Sure. So there's a newspaper in China, China Daily. It is the English news. And they call it the China Good News Daily because there's nothing but good news. No one does anything wrong. Everything is wonderful. If you go to a board meeting, you're not allowed to criticize anyone. Yeah. Oh, I don't like your tone. You're not you're not speaking nicely. And I don't feel like I'm in a safe space anymore. So since they're not here, I'm allowed to talk. That's wonderful. But you call the Department of Planning. I have a question for their planning. Mm -hmm. When was the last time they opened? the brand new school that didn't immediately have at least six portables at it. That's how good their planning is. <laughs> Let's show. I don't know, it's been 10, 15 years. I'm guessing since the 
in the existence of the Thomas by my school board. I they might have opened a couple schools that didn't immediately require multiple portables, mm -hmm. but calling them a planning department is a joke. I went through this twice with the same Springfield school stuff. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw East Elgin was in an arc, I'm like, back up. How are they going to fuck us over this time? Because they don't care about Elgin County. They obviously aren't cognizant of where the Elgin Middlesex County line is. Otherwise, they wouldn't be shipping all those Elgin County students into Middlesex County. How are they able to make the decision in London for? Because we're all in Southern. Yes. So, and that that's been a historical issue. So, just just if I may, uh, I just before we lose, I want to make sure oh, yes. that some of yeah. the points were brought up. Okay. So, a concern about. Uh, uh, Elgin County and the rural component uh, being set uh, as a second class citizen to the uh, the urban London component. And that has been a historical issue since the school board and I'm, I'm and just it's, it's always been that way. Other people and in this brief, but I don't think it's much better yet. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, but that would be one thing. The other was, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if, uh, just before I get to you, Beth, sorry. I just okay. want to make sure these points are, are uh, captured. Uh, second meeting. Okay, posting a second meeting to, uh, to to allow uh, greater dissemination of information, obtaining further information. Oh yes, and the other thing was uh, uh, having having people uh, that uh, was brought. I, I believe you brought it up, uh, uh, possibly you about uh, maybe someone from uh, from communities from, from town council. So what I might make a suggestion is, is that our current mayor is a former principal from here, who has a passion for this school. So why not invite? The council. Hopefully, he or and or others could come to a, another meeting and maybe this is a first. They like to say they have consultation with municipalities. Perhaps okay. they could send an email to any councillor that is in the East Elgin catchment. Okay. I okay. have an I'm Ward Two councillor for Malahide. I know. So, the reason that I'm Ward Two councillor is because of these. <clears throat> trying to screw over Springfield twice. We got it reversed, and they were the ones that spurred me to become a municipal councillor. So I'm back. I'm never stopping looking, and they are manipulative. They are just move these numbers here, move this here. I'm going to make this look like, oh, it's hardly any people going there. Yeah, because you changed the catchment. It's manipulation on purpose. And they get offended if someone swears at a meeting. Stop doing offensive things to the rural people, and we won't have to swear at you. Are there any board members in this, like, online right now at all? No, no, they're not supposed to be. Right now, for reasons that I don't quite understand. But so I'd like to get Beth in. She's been waiting patiently. Okay, Beth, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I attended the Dorchester uh, meeting last night, and it was also very poorly attended. Um, there was a trustee that was listening in on the call, but um, I just feel like the timeline was so tight for asking for uh, parent feedback that. It was done purposely. Um, I don't know how you're supposed to uh, collaborate all the feedback from all the families that are affected by this in such a short time frame. Because if you look at the um, what they're projecting is like June, they're supposed to have this final decision made. Well, it's the end of April right now, and there's a lot of families that, like you said, don't even know about this or are very like ill-informed and. 
I just feel like it was done on purpose and it's pretty sneaky, I think. And um, yeah, it's very upsetting. Um, so I, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, just about the, uh, the fact of having siblings uh, follow um, follow um, current students. So um, for our family, it's really important to have continuity within our family for um, our kids going to the same high school. And my son is um, supposed to be starting at East Elgin in September. So if this goes ahead, um, I'd really like to see some grandfathering happening, um, allowing our younger son to come to East Elgin if that's how they're going to work it. Um, and I'm, I'm also concerned about transportation. If, you know, if they don't grandfather us in and we have to go to uh, Lord Dorchester, um, you know, is there any way that we could skirt that somehow and continue to go to East Elgin? How would transportation be affected in that regard? Um, I'll let you continue on with your slideshow because I'm curious to see what the numbers are showing um, for the population, you know, projections. Um, at Dorchester last night, they had said that um, in 2024, the school will be at 110% population. And then in 2028, it'll be 125% full of students. So I don't see how this change is really making much sense because you're overpopulating another school by shifting children um, to a different different high school. So it seems really really backwards and frustrating. And I'm just curious what your your slideshow will show for your numbers at East Elgin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All, right. All of your comments. So, so. Thank you. Oh, um, yes. Oh, I agree. I, I can speak to experience with that. As a, as a child, uh, jobs around and the, uh, to two different schools with two different schools. And, and it, it was hard. It was really hard to walk into a new community, a new school, barely begin to know somebody, and then and the very next year, move to a new community, a new school. So I, I do agree. There's there's a mental health concern for our students. That must be a big thing. Of course, they might come back and say uh, <clears throat> to the child psychologist, say that whether they are resilient, which they are, but they really don't personally. They're they are resilient. That they like, need to set that aside for. What are they get? Yeah, for sure. that's. Yes. So can I just, I, and I'm here for different reasons. I, I live in Elmer. My, this won't affect which school my children go to. My biggest concern is some of the things you mentioned, was, was things like program costs. Mm -hmm. I worry when they, I've seen it happen at other schools and they, I lived through an arc in Tilsonburg and they didn't do the bathrooms properly and there's overcrowded and it, it didn't work. So I'm just worried that my students could end up, my children could end up attending a high school that doesn't have all the courses that it offers right now because we could be under. And, and, and then we potentially, have to, to well, and we'll have, and potentially have to close because yes. so that this, like, this I've is seen it too. In, is it Norwich High School? Close Norwich High School, turned it into an elementary school. So but I just worry of the future for Elmer. I don't, I don't have those, you have the concerns, the huge concerns in your heart that your kids could have to be torn apart from the friends. I have also the concerns of what this will do to Elmer as a community 
And I think some of the people in Elmer don't realize that it won't affect your kids still gets to go to East Elgin, but it may affect what kind of programs your child gets at East Elgin. It may affect well, they, if I expect how competitive our sports teams are, I know that I feel like even if it has impacted Davenport that we lost so many sets of Chester children. I was excited for when my kids hit grade seven and eight so they could have a larger group of friends. That's when I met John's brother Nat. I think I loved when I hit grade seven and eight and I got to meet some more friends. It made the world a little bigger. There were people that had more in common with me. It was a good transition to sell it because I was also a South Dorchester kid. We moved to Belmont because we were getting into school when I was in grade one. Do you all know where that is? It's free to on, like, <laughs> yeah, it got to experience meeting the grade seven and eight kids. Super excited when we got to play high school hockey and complete playing with the Belmont boys. My son is in grade six right now, but that's the age where he's getting a little bit of sick of some of his friends and the circles. And next year, when he's in grade seven, he will be five. But even that was sad at me. So now it would be sad to me that if he comes to East Elgin, the circles are going to continue to stay small and he won't have those Belmont kids that just had. I, my best friend growing up was about, I met her from, she came from Belmont, we met in grade seven. It just makes me sad that the city is pulling things towards them. And I just, if I had an even younger child, I'd worry that eventually East Elgin might not be here and I'd be busing them to St. Thomas. My youngest is in grade six, so I don't need to worry about it far in the future, but I worry about with my grade two students that I'm teaching right now by the time they get to East Elgin, what would be here for them? Even the like the plus that they elect to have. And, that also and you have a great DLP program here, and you have great sports, you have great everything. And why did they even have the tour if this was even gonna happen? Why did they get the kids excited? It's not officially. Is there still a chance it could be reversed like how the spring tour? Yeah. Sure, so hoping there's something happening here. I do too believe in Jesus. Because, like, well, if you, because it's not the closure, the meeting's not over. Right, right. This is just, oh, it's just a boundary adjustment. Uh, this is, this is this, the first step of the slippery slope on their way. So, like, the, the numbers in this thing are so stupid. So, they want to, once they start adjusting, East Elgin is going to be 86% full, Lord Dorchester 110% full in 24-25. And then by 28-29, Lord Dorchester is going to be 126% occupancy and East Elgin down to 76. Well, do you see that if you take 25%, and add it to 75%, you get 100. And if you take 125 and subtract 25, you get 100. So I'm not sure who's doing the math here, but I don't give a shit how new the new math is, but some's not adding up. Did you, Johnny, did you look and see where it started? Because it's, it's a Clark Road problem. That is becoming a Dorchester problem. That is becoming an outlet. Yeah. And watch the build a new school in London. Yeah. 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 Y
you can get in a lot of trouble for that. Okay. <laughs> so I'm wondering after reading through nearly a hundred pages of reports, was it the so I mean there's a picture of me in the Elmer paper with the sunshine list like this standing on a table of the administration building. Okay. So did Watson and Associates copy the administration's report? Or did the administration copy Watson and Associates report? Because the two reports are identical. And I guess my question on that one is, if you have two different people giving you identical reports, administration got paid to do it. But did they copy Watson and Associates work? Or did Watson and Associates get paid to do a report just so that it wasn't the administration's numbers? And how much did Watson and Associates cost? Because I know we're already paying hundreds of thousands price for that building, millions and millions of dollars for the six figure people to sit in offices. So I'm wondering who copied whose work. Sounds like positive. To get the exact same report. A lot of money went somewhere for the same damn numbers. So I would not be allowed to say that at the Thames Valley meeting in their office. That's criticizing yeah. people. Not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's it. Yeah. But the numbers make no sense. It's complete manipulation. But if they keep it, like, where would they be right now if they closed New Sarum and Springfield? Nowhere, because the Bellevue School hasn't been built. <laughs> Next year, out of all the Westminster and all the other kids that are coming to South Dorchester, now they're going to start shipping other kids to New Sarum and Springfield. Because it's so overloaded and the Belmont school's not built yet. They just built their planning department is a joke, even using the word planning in their title. Is the school even happening? Is the Belmont school we'll eventually build in we'll get annex to process for how long? But, but they have to they have to realize where the Elgin Middle Section border is. When they started trying to change around the borders for some provincial federal writing, well, I mean, I'm gonna call it gerrymandering. They don't like that Elgin County keeps getting blue. I mean, you could run a potato as a conservative in Elgin County and they would get elected. So, of course, they want to break it up. So it's London and plus half a Middlesex, London and plus half a Middlesex. That way they can maybe change the provincial and federal whoever's getting elected. But that got shut down because Elgin County is its own damn entity. And if these guys want to keep coming after Elgin County, there used to be an Elgin County Board of Education. I worked for them. And I don't see why the hell we wouldn't go back to an Elgin County Board of Education if we have a bunch of people in London that don't care if we exist or not. And if they want to keep pushing on this kind of shit and the way their numbers are going, they're going to be closing down East Elgin and trying to ship all the kids to St. Thomas, all the kids to Tilsonburg. I don't know. It's a complete bullshit plan, whatever it is. And all of these numbers and all of this manipulation all happened before the announcement that we're going to get this huge Volkswagen plant. And once people start moving into the area to fill that plant, to build it, to build houses all around this spot, these population numbers are going to be complete bullshit. And they're going to be wishing they never closed up anything in the east end of Elgin County. Because yeah. where the hell the plant? It's going to fill Belmont, Springfield, Elmer. All of these numbers are complete 
Well, they're complete bullshit to start with. Yeah. But now that this is happening, that is not in the plan. It's not considered. It the plan is bunk, and they gotta stop messing with the East Elgin. Mm -hmm. To reiterate for you, Mr. Wilson. Okay, I do have a passion for this school. In the community, I went to high school here. I taught here under the Elgin County Board of Education. I have four kids, last of which has graduated this year. And I've been on the council for many, many decades. So that is, is an interesting one. I, I love the school. And I will try and do whatever I can to facilitate that this school remains is a viable school. It's always been a concern for me that yes, this school uh, it, it's it has been depleting the historical average for the student population here uh, in the uh, 80s right through to maybe maybe within the last eight years or so has been between 1,200 and 1,400 students. We're far into the populations that have flow. The back industry is gone, has sunk, for sunk. Now, yes, there will be an influx in the population, as you say. So hopefully we will benefit from it. I want to know what you know we can do to, to help. We're not just here because the school board directed us to produce this meeting. We do honestly the council want to uh, facilitate and hopefully ensure that, uh, that that at least the status quo will remain and if not something better for itself and so please understand almost i that's I, that's why i'm not to it's okay all right you that's all right um my question is when did they come up with this new policy that we want kids to be in the same school from kindergarten until they graduate high school? When when did that? Because when I saw we want to take the Belmont and here's the thought with the Dorchester. Yeah, because Stratfordville kids can choose half of Stratfordville students go to Glendale yeah. and half go to the Selgin. So yeah. that coming down the pipeline that eventually all of Stratfordville will go to so Glendale to and then they would get less East Elgin kids. Well, that's, that was in the report. They're saying that they want kids to have that, that be able to travel from K to 12 with the same group. That's and currently Port Burwell, some of depending where you live and attend in Port Burwell, some will go to Glendale, some will go to East Elgin, and some will go to Valley Heights. So okay. another sword. Yeah. So it's not, I, the more I think about this is a rural versus this is like it's just some bullshit made up thing that suits their numbers for this particular round of stuff. Because the kids that are in Sparta, French Marine School, if they when they get grade eight, they can continue in their French Marine track and go to St. Thomas. But a lot of these kids, they can come to East Elgin or they can go to St. Thomas, depending where they live, because the French Marine School for us is pulling both directions. So they technically from K to eight are with their group, but depending which track they take. Cool. So then would they eventually make all of them? Like it's cool. I still feel like kids in London have choice over high school too. Like they can say they can have a city bus, but they have choice. They don't have to go. They can hop in the city bus and go to whatever. My friend's yeah. friend, my friend is on grade seven. She goes to go to Saunders. She can go in a hot water city bus and go to Saunders. Because you can go wherever you want. So it's why but we have the same choice? Because but we could, but we would have to train together. If this were to if, if it were to happen by the time my youngest is at East Elgin and the courses he needed weren't here, I could take them to St. Thomas, but I have to drive from there. But the thing is, is um, these rules aren't rules. They're just whatever they want to choose, this and that to manipulate stuff to suit their purposes. Is the problem. The rules yes, always and some of those have been purposes of political 
in some of them for we want the elementary team. schools to be junior kindergarten to grade eight. That's the model for Thames Valley School Board. Oh, except for Springfield, that's only to grade six. And oh, by the way, if you had to grade seven, it's eight, your school would be 100% occupancy. But it's not because we purposely cut you off at grade six, send those sevens, eight to some to the summer's corners, and now we're going to close your school. Well, except Dorchester was just like they are manipulators. They will do whatever they want to the numbers to suit whatever their fancy is next. Okay, I have a question for the administration because I not attending the meeting. Am I allowed to disseminate this to the uh, general parent population? The slideshow with the uh, information. I would say. I don't, see why not. I, I don't see why not. I mean, I haven't been given any direction. So if they uh, were the to thing. come back and say you shouldn't have done that, I'd say, well, that was, uh, you didn't tell me. This was all sent to every single parent in Thames Valley involved in this park months ago. This one was? It was very. 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 You're looking at a download speed of a hamster nipple. I was sitting there for an hour waiting and waiting and waiting. I didn't know and it anything it. else. It was good. Oh, oh. Did they win the information? I think there was a map that showed Belmont being taken out. I couldn't yeah. find that tonight. Well, I was working on it. Some of it was this But that's when you. Like, that's how it's brought down. Can we not bring this forward saying, hey, like, why was this very, like, this is on you guys? Like, can we not? It's just, it's their level. It's how they operate. It's just. But the more, the more stuff we have against them. Yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. It's complete it's, manipulation. I, well, I, I feel, think. Uh, I feel like it needs to be. This isn't going, like, we need, it needs to be louder. And that's how. Yeah. They had success with saving Springfield because that it needs to be louder and people need to understand that us rural folk are ticked about this well, and it's not okay. Well, no. But I think that I, I think that Elmer parents don't actually know. I think that Elmer parents they don't, don't realize know. what they it looks like. Like. I think how could no, we impact I don't to be a lot of different parents that I know Belmont. I thought they would have been here tonight. So I'll put it all over the Belmont parents page tonight. Like it's happening. And see, and there was no second. We, we only got that one email. For every other thing that the board does, we get multiple emails to remind us to come to their event. This was a one email. I had to go daily to find it tonight to forward it to some other people to say, hey, look, like, people to come. There's going to be a lot more parents from Belmont here. And that could have been part and parcel with the issue of uh, a short turnover time that uh, the school board had to, for the child and student. I mean, I'm now, I will say yeah. a positive thing we talked about the negative to East Elgin. My son brought home multiple photocopy papers looking for someone to join this committee. Yes. I couldn't join it because I'm an employee and my husband cannot join any more community groups and stuff. So, yeah. um, they tried to get people to join this art committee. He brought home a lot of papers. So, you did do a great job. At we saw them trying to get parents engaged. I got lots of emails from East Elgin and lots of paper copies from East Elgin. And every time I was like, oh, I wish I could join, but I can't. So I thank you for trying to get So I, I can ask the principal of staff for Like, what is this about? Like, what's going on? I have no idea. She, she didn't even have it. Possibly. Might have, but like, you might. Obviously, she, I don't know what she can say, but I put it on the dad and said she said that she was involved. There was no reminder that it was like, oh, it's just kind of like, I don't think she knew because she usually really good at saying. Right. Yeah. Like, but, uh, you think that she would be a person that would know for so sure. Perhaps, and I'm just throwing this out there, perhaps it was because they do get a lot of stuff that that was just glossed over because it doesn't directly affect. That particular school, maybe that's yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. and to the Davenport Parent Council. I know we wouldn't have gotten it at McGregor, we don't have a parent council this year, but I feel like it's a message that needs to get out to 
parent council at Springfield, Summers Corner, Stratfordville, Fort Burwell, those parents need to know and hear what their local high school may look like in the future if something is done to change to change what the board has planned. Okay. Yeah. And what East Elgin offers and their tech programs here compared to other high schools is phenomenal. And what is that Volkswagen plant going to need? A whole lot of people that know how to do shit. Good golly. So, like, it's just stupid on top of stupid. It's, they're just, it's, and it's because of the makeup of the Thames Valley Board. Elgin gets to, Middlesex gets to, Oxford gets to, London gets six, the natives get one because they're half urban, half rural. I agree a lot of the times. And you certainly suck up your spring. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Elgin has always been uh, uh, the little brother. Be polite about it. But about it. They, they tried to get Middlesex reduced to one vote. They said they were going to do this rural consultation thing. Never. Well, <laughs> it was the schmoms, the report, because uh, Marcus Ryan, he was on the committee for this rural thing, and they sent the report out and they talked about it at county council. And then Tom Jolly just went, no, we're done. Let's your rural task force. You just quit. The trustees told you to come up with the rural task force. And they didn't complete it. It was just whenever they don't get their way and the rural voice is getting too much. Shut down. No dissent. Don't tell them what's happening. They won't get mad if they don't know about it. It's manipulation. I'm so. It is not how rural people act. It is not what rural people are used to. People that are this manipulative and deceitful aren't popular out here in the rural areas. In the city, you can act like this and just disappear. No one knows who their neighbor is. and They don't care. Well, guess what? We do out here, and it matters. I don't want to see this town get hollowed out because a bunch of people in London that have no idea of what it means to this community are just changing an Excel seat, drop the thread, click here, cut, paste, mean something to us. <laughs> Okay. All very valid comments. Um, these are the boundaries of that, but and the feeder schools. Now, you indicated that this has been disseminated out to the to the general population. Then, yeah. not very well. Not very well. It was like I said, like I'm sorry, okay. There, there was an email that went out three months ago. Springfield parents got it too, I think, right? So I, I got it both sides. The entire valley it like through the student, it didn't it went through the parent portal. Okay, okay, the one that but it, it was never sent to any counselors. Or any municipal governments. In and it wasn't country. sent specifically, I don't think, to school counties. No, it was just sent out as a, hey, here's a art. And then when I tried to download the thing, I couldn't. Forever. Couldn't get it. Okay. And and that, the one that we got on the 19th, it says you're ready to attend a meeting about potential changes to ETH and secondary school attendance area. Elementary families, including those out of area, are being notified because the attendance changes may affect where their children attend school. And then you can click on the link to find out more about it. But all it doesn't have as much information as it had when we got one month 
was nothing. Months ago, I remember a message saying, what did he, what did he sell the green um, And Some of that's missing. I couldn't find the map tonight that showed the clear boundary of what they wanted to take away from these buildings. Okay, so prior to uh, our request for a second meeting, then we need to ensure we need clearer information that there's elementary information. Perhaps this being uh, disseminated to go to the uh, elementary parent councils. The elementary. There needs to be board members or listening in. I don't like this. <laughs> is it well, is it like this or not? Like, is it possible to create something? And I don't know the answer to this. That is just more specific to what the effects are for East Elgin. And disseminate that to our community because that, that's what people need to hear. They it's it's to too that. much for parents who don't understand what this looks like to mm -hmm. what have, okay, so I have to go to page 197 to realize what that looks like. Is it possible? And I don't know if it has to, I can't be on the committee, but I don't know if somebody on the committee can create something that is a little bit more precise and to the point with Johnny's numbers that says why is this happening and make that go out on social media so that it's not something that you have to scroll 200 pages down to find. And something right. that has the numbers that we go down to 76 percent and letting people know that that would affect what courses are offered at your local. That would affect when you're overpopulated. That would affect how many teachers are at That would affect. That's what people need to hear and don't understand. Yeah. And I also think that's why as employees we're not allowed to be on the committee because those are the things that our eyes are going to notice. Well, you've that got, the, uh, you've got inside knowledge that right, we know that we don't. And when when I got the initial email and found these numbers you know, a few months ago, the way that it's written for the in order to be like to be I own I got my form in I it was after the deadline. Then when they had the meeting, it was right in the middle of budget deliberations and I had to go to the budget deliberations. I couldn't go to the, the school board meeting. But the way that it was written was that you had to have a student going to East Elgin in order to even have them even voice your opinion, basically. And I'm like, well that doesn't really wash. I put my thing in anyway because my son is going to go here next year daughter in two <laughs> so you know but it's not it's it's purposely not user friendly <laughs> so another suggestion that i would throw is that um once we make this request in more of a demand for a second meeting even though you know, it might conflict with the school board's timelines that aside from from public figures and that, why not get the media involved? The local uh, media would uh, sit in and that also helps too. Do you think those have to happen within the next two months before they make their actual decision? Supposedly that's the information they've got, but they, they've they given us a short time. That's insane. So. And our local media now has grandchildren and the children that will one day attend the school and will want them to have a full course selection. We will not want to ship them to St. Thomas. And, you know, we didn't do as well the first time through the arc because we were learning how to play the game. The timelines are short so that you can't figure out what the rules are to the game you're playing until it's over with. The second time we knew what they were game they were playing. We knew how they were hiding the information. We knew how to ask for the stuff that we didn't know how to ask for it the first time through. And we were obviously a lot more successful with it, but it is just the, well, the show. Me. Yeah, the show. Me. So then, one of the questions I have for you is: Is it worth my while or our while to uh, scroll through this right now? Or there is a document that uh, was so kindly uh, presented to us that does uh, produce a little bit more information that directly affects our school. I mean, my intention is that we will get this up to the to the school on mass. And is that uh, acceptable? Can the school do that? I guess uh, under our authority, uh, or does does the school board say? You guys all have this document. Pardon? You all have this document. I don't have this document. I don't know. 
This was this is the original one, right? No, this is this is like the two hundred pages. This is the the very first, like early, early when I asked if we could put it in. Yeah, the staff email, and I was told no, but then you did it. So I was like, good job, baby. I don't know. Because the first, I think the first time I saw this was at one of the council meetings. I don't recall myself. As a student, as a school, I don't know that the board able to share this, but as a committee, I don't see why you can't think of just sharing it. Yes, so, so I'll do that. Okay, we'll send that out. Um, and if you didn't get it the first time you want it, just to, so that you can take so the time to go through it. Just and please provide us with how would that how so. you guys have access to all of our emails is how would you get it out no, for the immediate oh, folks sure. that are here Absolutely. right now you could share it so and but we will somehow work out here. with the school to have it broadcast out to the to the Random email it needs to have like this needs to be very serious. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then <laughs> um, <laughs> this feeds into Mr. Wilson's uh, comments. <laughs> Yes. The three and a half application projected for the recent eight years to participate finds we have think twice as many people in our tech programs are the as student population. So I just have a few. Our school has what 350 and our tech there's 50 classes of tech here that they have enhanced because we're investing at the school. So compared to that, we have 350 things up here and 50 kids total. And just manufacturing, we have an eight point two just in the manufacturing department. Not together. But so that's a little bit of a bone of contention for the tech department here. We're not cradle and tech emphasis school. How many tech points would our people have? Five. 13. We have over 50 lines of tech, and they're called the tech emphasis school. So I think that thousands. And, and with that comes money, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a tech and emphasis school is based on the amount of tech we offer, not the amount we offer. So for example, they have the hospitality. But they don't have the factory. I don't think we when they were doing it. They don't have to. 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 No, I'm saying when they were given the designation, which was the tech designation was given about 10 years ago. Anyway, that's a bit of a bone. They're designated more of a tech school than a school. Yeah. They're designated as tech. Which is fine. Which is fine. I just don't think that should be a reason. Um, well, no, but that would maybe help like, to get more money at the school. Um, I feel like, and again, I'm biased, but um, I feel like our tech program is really good. And uh, um, I have a great in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like everybody's good. It's community, it's where some of our families are in the tech industry, it's getting jobs. I just think we have to just like, and if we did this population, we can and we are in a So add to that, ladies, it's not just an addition of uh, or a lot a concern of loss of staff in general, but staff with uh, that have uh, specialty areas expertise as well. Thanks.
this is the graph that um, back up. I was wondering that. So yes. So. Yeah. yeah. So he's still getting, yeah, loading it. It's, Eleven fifty five projected uh, twenty twenty four at nine eighty eight and then uh, twenty eight twenty nine projected at eight eighty one. Fifty one to seven sixty to eight twenty three. So it's one hundred and ten percent to one hundred and twenty six percent capacity while he's down to drop seventy six percent. It's just, it's like it's it, Dorchester's growing too. Like, to be honest, they don't need us. No. They don't need our people. They're doing fine on their own. It's, it's okay. manipulation is just unparalleled. You know, I said it's a house or whatever, but like, it wasn't expected by Trump. And so, my daughter's part of the French emergency. A lot of the parents ended up pulling, and I think the school board should hear this. A lot of parents pulled their kids from the school board system and then Catholic and went to I think what happened here, they'll go to St. Joe, um, where they will um, pull them and go to other school boards. That's happened uh, frequently in the past over contentious issues. I've heard the school way better than St. Joe's. Sorry, no, but I've heard the school way better than St. Joe's. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Um, but when my daughter did the French immersion thing, the next year they didn't just but the next year there were eight kids that registered for the S A class year, but they didn't just and the parents speak by pulling their kids in. If the school board wants to retain um, we'll make note that there's uh, a genuine concern of uh of a voluntary loss of uh, student population, which I agree. It's already it's it's down. down. And if they have to go that way, um, then they can probably do it. So they'll be able to get a bus here. Yeah. Right. If you're trying to get a bus here, right? You can go to the CJ. You can go to get a bus to the CJ. You can go to the CJ. You can go to the CJ. Sorry, I didn't hear that part. Thank you. Um, oh, did we lose it? No. Okay. Oh. Oh. Sure. I see. I thought I thought all of them were shared. No, you can only share. Okay. Not that I know. I don't know if that's uh, that the fault of uh, of council or not. I don't know. I said that, and everyone on council was like, "What?" Yeah, that is part of the issue, you know, the, I guess you can't expect that. School board doesn't want, well, I guess it depends on the circumstances. Sometimes they want all sorts of newspapers and media there. 
Probably yeah, I mean, them. you know what? That's a great idea, and it never dawned on me to uh, consider that. It wasn't, you know, mentioned in part of the instructions of, uh, you know, people to consider. So, you know, on behalf of the council, I'll take responsibility for not uh, well, not well, inviting us here, but, I don't um, think but it's, we definitely will. I don't think it's your responsibility either. Well, it, it, it is in a way because that's part of the purpose of a parent council, right? Is to it's to act as a as a communication go between, disseminate, to obtain information, um, share, and things like that. So. Um, but as I say, it just never occurred to me. And, uh, so if it had, if I probably would have. But, but, but if we are able to get a second meeting, then definitely we'll share with us uh, because that's that's the best way to get that information out to to the not only the school population but the community population because the community is is always affected as well. Right? It's a ripple effect. So. That could be happy to months. We can be. I don't know. I was the screen. We can be loud. One thing I'll tell you is I I fought different battles decades ago with the school board and became very frustrated because it became apparent to me that that on certain issues that once decisions are made that it's just kind of let's listen to these people and. Them off of them. And I think that's what happened in Norwich when they tried to save their high school, and a lot of people just left Thames Valley and took their kids to Delta. They lost. I swear it's in Dutch private schools in yeah. Norwich. What is on the screen now? Who is that letter to? Uh, this was for our purposes and uh, generated by the school to uh, perhaps. Uh, sift through that uh, that multi-page document and information that they gave us. So it provides us with a little bit more direct information as to how it's going to affect us. So only 17 students are currently here from South Dorchester, like we're in Walden grade nine. Yes. But the, this information is coming from the school. Yes. That it comes out like yes. that. There's only 17 students from South Dorchester here right now. No, no, that's projected for grade nine, right? But oh, that would be for grade nine. No, that's current. This is current. So, so seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be kids, which is horrible. But it's not counting your son, who's currently at Davenport. He's at Davenport. He's at Davenport. He's at Davenport. So he, the numbers are, so the numbers are also not right. correct. He lives, he lives in Virginia. In the, you just chose to have your grandfather in to stay at that point. Yeah, because that was his choice. But if you had moved him, then it'd be up to eight. So like, how so many that's other kids stay that time? Right, that's not even accurate. So I think what's more important, though, than the, than the actual accuracy of the numbers are, but the numbers are an indicator to me. When I first saw that, I look at it as, okay, so if the school board is expecting that it's going to be a so-called minimal student population impact to us are we going to just accept what's what their decision is or are we going to say mm, you know is this something that we need to revisit that's what i saw from it, it you know i just go by the numbers um you know if if they're off by slight by single digits i mean it's to me it's it's not relevant so much. It's the fact that we have a few families that are supposedly going to be directly involved. So is it important for us to go beyond those few families and involve the, the whole school community? I say yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if, does that make sense? Does, if we want to defend what we have because, and maintain it yeah. and make sure it isn't purposely eroded. It's more or less like being yeah. chipped away, yeah. right? So, I mean. That thought for what, that year? For the students or the following year? It's not a full picture 
of the incoming students in the years. So is it like, yeah. see the last sentence there? The data represents enrollment numbers as of October. Last October. So, yeah, so, right now, but it's yeah. also all the people that are coming behind them because once they set this in place, sure, everybody yeah. is going to be affected by yeah. it, not just the grade eights or right? Yeah. Grade I personally think it's important that you know we, we address our concerns um, because when I see numbers like that in the back of my mind, I anticipate that maybe the school board's going to say, "Well, you know, does a lot of families aren't going to be directly impacted; uh, they'll be indirectly impacted." So maybe that you know we'll just make these changes. Mm -hmm. That's 24 classes to which I would be removed from the spelling. Um, which, like Trace said, that means whatever, less fees, less days, less tech for yes. kids to pick. And then you're down to the bare, like we're already seeing that in the senior B12 classes. If you're in the university that right? way, you're really not going to have much of a choice. That's even going to go down more and for all patterns and should have all the in place. It also affects your student supports. It's, it affects your guidance. Exactly. I think next year, uh, we have this brand new library and because our numbers are down, it now has to be closed one period a day each semester, each semester. So like it, it has a ripple effect. It's not just the classes that we're offering and also the supports that we have for kids, supports with our students with IEPs. It, is, it supports our office staff. Like it's, yep. it's everything. It is. It's not just, it, it is the way that this building runs. And as somebody who went to school here and who works here, and it, I consider myself a lifer, like a few of the other that are in here, it really matters. Carol, the light. Carol's light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we will address them. Can we ask them for more numbers? Can we ask them how many students are at Davenport that will be coming to grade nine next year that are actually South Dorchester students? That would be in my catchment. Okay. And I'm thinking something else. We have our number go up and down. That could have been a low for a small cohort that year. And the next year, grade nine, so we have 30 something that we're supposed to go. Yep. Because I think of our school even we had five FTK, five FTK, four FTK. This year, next year, we're only going to have three, but the next year will probably go back up to four or five. Exactly. You have to be critical of the number, look deeper into the numbers. Yeah, they can't. As was mentioned small. earlier, like numbers are just a snapshot. And numbers can be skewed either way, however you want to skew them. I've always been more interested in looking at historical averages and things like that, which gives you a broader picture. That's just me. Can we bring up a question about how in the, the rural versus urban, how in the city kids can have their choice if they want to be at the more art school or tech school, they can hop on city bus and get tra transportation. We don't have that here, so we want to keep our yeah, school sorry, that has sorry, a legitimate yeah, thing. Yeah, got limitations and uh, that, that provides the opportunities for programs and things like that. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Our next steps are that from, from the council perspective, we, we compile the data and in, in questions and concerns. Uh, meetings being recorded and uh, both uh, audio and uh, paper by a lovely ladies there. And, uh, then we produce a, a report, goes back to the, uh, to the school board and from that point, I'm not exactly sure. Team How quick does that happen? Pardon? How quick does that happen? It's like, again, we only have two months before they make the final decision. I, mean, we know, like, I, I don't. I don't know. Can we have to be quite confused? Trustees, that's your direct info. Uh, are like uh, concerns through the administration here. I mean, they can certainly, they, they can't advocate directly you know, for 
for you, but at the same time, they can certainly um, communicate to the school board that they're getting a lot of or are inundated or a lot of um, questions and concerns as well that can come above and beyond this report that we're supposed to provide. So can we maybe send a letter to the trustee just reporting on what they felt was a lot of communication at this meeting? And, um, now they brought in attendance advocating that the trustee also advocate for another meeting as well. It's a great idea. Yes, we can do that. So like if I'm if I'm go home and I put all over the Belmont parents Facebook, like this group that we have for down the board graduation and all that kind of stuff, who do I tell them to go to to make notes? Trustee is, a, is your primary target. I'm just wondering if maybe a small paragraph, like very great point for those notes of what's happening can be standardized. So everyone is on the same page and that gets, that's the consistent message that gets sent out to our union branch president where we can forward it to our personal emails as staff to parents and say, these are the messages or in a standard email. Sometimes we've seen that where you email your trustee, but you email on the standard message saying like I care about my child whatever community and then that just gets because it's easy for people to make noise when it's done for them and they just copy the message forward it on quantity petition yeah we've got an online petition that I can look at and like technology wise yeah, the, the issue with online petitions is that um, from a legal standpoint, they don't hold the same weight as, as uh, written or local petitions. Um, what's a member of provincial department brought by? That's a good one. Yeah, why not? And that's why they're here. All the other councils. I feel like Bayham Council needs to know yeah. how this can affect their straffa bill for urban. Bayham should know. Well, I just remember the central law that should know. And what's Sparta, what's Sparta considered? Are they central? That's the central. That's the central. Are you saying for the middle stretch of the thing to go to five to go? And the board's argument is that they want everyone to go, all the kids to go together to meet at eight, go together to the city high school. And I'm charging some of them to take a phone And when it used to be Sparta, they used to be two. That, that's the thing. Like it, it, their their premise for moving the students into Dorchester is bullshit to start with, and it's just it suits their purpose this time. So that's what they're saying. But it doesn't suit their purpose. The rules aren't the rules. Just pick and choose as they go. Like Springfield. Oh, we can't have Springfield open because it's on wells. Well, Springfield, yeah, it's on water wells. But there's also a sewer system in Springfield. Yes, yeah. Summer's Farmers is on wells and the septic, but they want to keep it open to close Springfield because it's not serviced. Well, it's only a rule if it suits their purpose. It's right, it's on the water. Yeah, it's yeah. Don't get me started on that. Actually, if that's the case, I will get started on it. I think it's all the water is going to be all over the place. Oh, no, I know what they've done. It's disgusting. <laughs> One thing I will say is that people make the final decision in the process. And so, Johnny and I, that you're this, uh, it's their fault they can't. So if you want to voice your opposition, then that's when you voice it too. That's what we need. So how many rural trustees do we have for Springfield? Six and six with the uh, who's the best one to go to? Oh, well, yeah. Well, two trustees at the school are Megan, Megan, and Sanders. And they're like they're doing as good a job as they can in yeah. circumstances, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not there. We have a bullet. Sorry. Yeah. But at least if they, they did bullet. everything that we asked of them. I thought like that would be the book left. Yeah. That's up there. The right. um, so if you go to the website, yeah. you'll see 
Okay. Well, the families that will be affected, are they being sent direct communication or is it just mass communication at this point? I feel like if they have those numbers, they would know the families that would be affected that they should be maybe targeting them. Maybe that's I'm afraid I can't answer that. I don't know if the school board has sent them direct uh, you didn't communication. Get the to you. Yeah, no, I don't. I haven't seen this. Okay. I just got the message saying there is possible change in attendance at high school. I only add the first communication that came out. When I read it, it sounded, it made, I can't remember what I read, but it made it sound like my son is in grade nine, a Syrian East Duncan, would be allowed to stay in East Duncan, but my son is in South Dorchester, will be in grade eight next year, would have to go to the Dorchester school. I'm like, what? I don't want two kids in two different schools. Right. So through the online communication, I did send in clarification to that because my son is here. I had their son would be grandfathered in as well. So it would be the senior kids in our home school. Um, they responded that schools with students would be expected to attend their designated school at that time, which is September 2024. And if that's true, if we are not successful in this, why am I having more communications from the Thames Valley School Board about how that's affecting my grade nine student? And what courses he's going to be attending Tuesday at Dorchester, uh, the, or Dorchester High School next year. Like, if anything that frustrates me more is the kids that have been affected by these changes at Dorchester, Belmont. They have been affected in so many ways and promised so many things. The South Dorchester's kids were promised a new school, it's never been delivered. Um, my son, who then had to stay there for seven and eight, he was in school this year until November without a desk because they forgot to move the desks to South Dorchester with all the kids from his ministry. So, like, it's so frustrating to be on, um, feels like constantly pushed to the sidelines where these decisions are being made. But in the end of the day, it's the kids that are being affected. And that's lost, and I think, in all of these numbers. And that's that's a message that has to get to these trustees is there's a group of kids that are being disserviced in the system. Yes. And the question asking how come she's being told that her son would have to go to Lord Dorchester, but if you live in the city of London, you can pick to go to whatever high school you want to go to. And I think they can, they just don't want to get them to go. But they're, they do let you know if you really want your kids together, you may attend the song, but you'll have to provide your attention. Because they want, they, they're not letting you know that hey, you can keep your kids together. You shouldn't have to. The transportation would be either for the lunch fire, so it doesn't really make sense. Like, so and it's already there because it's bringing the disruption kids in from Belmont. Yes, yeah, so don't, don't they don't they switch and you're having this stuff? No, like that. It's a not change. Okay. Our South Dorchester bus driver drives to high schools. Well, I'm not sure if that means it's going to there, but I think the future is she just told them. So just for clarification for me, they no longer do transfers here from a uh, Catholic to no? Where do they get transferred? Right. You go right to school. Oh, okay. So we have assumption buses that show up here, but they can drop them. Like the assumption you can drop. So they're sharing the buses. So the public and Catholic board are sharing buses from yeah. So, and this is really on top of it. Probably just going to be fired eventually. But at the cost of busing, if you're going to come to East London, you should be allowed to pay the bus from here. We are currently coaching students out of my school, I feel, to go to the bridges program at Summer's Corners and busing from all over. 
I mean, are we in the like down on the bus to cross roads? Yes, yeah, so the bridges program was supposed to be to bridge children to public education, children who were being homeschooled, children who were truant, blah, 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 blah. We have had kids pulled out of our school to go to who are doing fine in regular school. They are, they've been pulled out because their parents wanted them to go to this program and they're doing bus all like they're paying for buses. Like they can find the money when it's convenient for them. When it suits them. So we are closing two classrooms at our school this year and they are opening two at Summer Corners. And how are all these kids getting Summer Corners? On a bus. And we are losing two teachers at our school. And that program is supposed to be bringing in students who are not in low income rallies. Let's see. Increasing our numbers, but instead we're just shuffling the rest. What we lost essentially for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe that's other than is the start. But what's the primary reason for changing the boundaries besides money? That's the real reason. But London what needs new high school. Pardon? Uh, London needs new high school, so they oh, can use those. That they're trying to build. They can just their own from Dorchester, look big to London, and get money to build a new high school. For example. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, a lot of the focus on on that information they sent us was directed uh, primarily to the north end of London, <laughs> east and west, and so it, it could be a shift. Yeah, because that's that's what the elder teacher said. I and I get moving boundaries, so you're not you don't want a school with twenty portables. That makes sense. But when you have room here. I just don't understand why you change the boundaries to move it to a school that can provide the, the needs as well as us. This so now we're saying now we're saying like if my daughter, my pretty or my eight year old daughter ever had to go to a door tender, she might eventually get switched to a London high school. I don't think so, but Dorchester will be full of portables. Maybe that's step one is to it just, I guess, the rationale yeah. on why boundary needs to change for here this week. You've got a good point there. I mean, be, because then if this was would be in theoretically step one, then once yeah. they find out that, that it's not quite working, then they would change the boundaries on the yeah. other side, right? Yeah. And then start sifting yeah. and, and yeah. changing. So, so that it, it's a good and interesting point. I, I know I brought it up earlier, but they need to be cognizant of where the Elgin Middlesex County line is. Mm -hmm. So if they keep on pushing with this kind of crap, there's going to be a push. Well, unfortunately, Middlesex County is pretty much tied to London because it surrounds it. Elgin and Oxford don't. We don't need to be part of that fight with them where only the city matters and the rural can eat it. And if they're going to keep acting like this, they better remember where that Elgin Middlesex border is because when we come to take our students back in the Elgin County School Board, they better be ready for it. Another Thing that I think might be interesting too is we talk about lose, losing students to out of board. John Salem's building a brand new high school in our backyard. So I can guarantee you that if East Elgin is losing students because we're not offering programs and they're building state of the art sports facilities, there are going to be community members in here that are going to say, if I can't get one, I need care in East like I always have. John Salem's right there. And didn't they just break ground? They just broke ground. And that's what's on Elmer Express right now. So I think that we really do need to be cognizant of the value of public education here in Elmer and the importance of keeping our kids here and offering those programs. And the school board needs to know that too, because they're not going to pull the kids out of, uh, they're just going to put them in the private, which there are, like John said, there's lots of those popping up in Norwich, et cetera. And I didn't realize that St. Thomas, their Christian school, their Christian school yeah. is also a big school. Yeah. 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 It is, and 
<laughs> That's a good concluding comment. <laughs> uh, anything that we've missed? So if there is an opportunity for a second meeting and there is that chance yes. for people to get, make some yeah. noise, what would the, you know, what the timelines look like or how would the communication to parents, community members, what would that look like moving forward? Short, short time frame because they were looking at more or less solidifying probably by end of June or so. In short, from a perspective, it's probably good. Like, start making noise right away and make it happen right away while the momentum is going. If a school board, I can't believe a school board has ever heard this time for this school. Not, not even to school, but like some municipal board. Yeah, that was that was my design. Was the information I got was that to, yeah, they wanted it, this to be a standalone and not. Uh, that just shows so much they actually care. That's an indicator. Yeah. Trying to avoid conflict, whatever. Not very about the second meeting, which is like at least one. Well, Johnny, in the Springfield meetings, were the trustees ever? Or, yeah, were the trustees were ever or not? Uh, many superintendents. Uh, there's, yeah, there is a few. Okay. And MVP, I think, right here, he's done every single game of Jim. Right. Or his top staff. Yeah. But I feel like representation. That way would be helpful as well, so that they can see, see and hear the voice. Yeah. has to be ten minutes. Like you know, when I when I brought it up at Ballon High Township Council, it was all brand new information to yeah. everyone there. Even when I talked to like, like the spring, my Springfield people, my Springfield friends, they also didn't understand or know what that yeah. means. Well, that's where you're going to get more feedback and proper information too. Then right. instead of sending us to the generalized meeting, a representative to a generalized meeting, being given information and then being told to come back and disseminate that people. But, but the, you know, the problem is, it isn't, we're going to close East Elgin. That's right. That's not that's like right. any of it says. So no one's really too worried about it. It's just this is where they start with the wrecking ball on one corner of the foundation. That's what's happening now. Not destroyed yet, but they're starting to. And well, the people that are here are like, hey, what the hell is this going on? There's gonna be more people that are like, oh, that's what they're up to. So it's just more people knowing, shine the light of the day on it. People that want to reveal the truth don't have any trouble with publicizing it. People that don't want it to be known what they're doing and what their manipulation is don't want people to see what they're doing. They don't want it to see the light of day. They want it to just be done before anyone sees what's actually happening. They're hoping it's too late. By design, that's what their demo is. No argument there. All right. Is there anything that we've missed? Any concerns? Questions? And if not, then we can conclude this. We'll get to work at. Uh, yeah, we'll get to work at. Uh, Do they have the information? You know what? Let, let's start. Let's if, if you want this information, then we can get it to you right away. Okay. And as I said, then, then just give us yeah, your email address, and then um, we'll put in a request to the school to look at uh, disseminating this information on mass. Okay. 
Kristen, uh, I'm going to unmute you here and oh. I'd like to give Kristen an opportunity to if she wants to give us her email address too. No, she's not. Oh, she's not there. Oh. Beth. It's Beth. Beth. OK. Well, just generally, if there's anyone still there that would like to uh, receive this information, then uh, please uh, provide us with your email address or uh, contact the school. Uh, you, you know what? Or you can send a request directly to me. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Let me capture that. Matt, right? And then they just get those last. Why? 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 I pulled the pump out and put it in a test pump thing and it pointed it out and then, like you told me to seal this. I am not sealing it. We have videos of the water shooting over my head and a big rainbow arc. There's nothing wrong with the level starting. It was that. Okay. Perfect. I've got Kristen and I've got Sarah. Bye. Anyone else there? Uh, Matthew, if you want this, uh, the, the information sent to you directly, I can get it to you right away. And you're very welcome. Well, I guess that's it. And I think Beth is left. Okay, folks, uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, Hopefully we've provided some uh, information for you that's uh, that, uh, we can move forward on this. And uh, please feel free if you've got something, I'll give you my email address too. Uh, once again, my name is Michael Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T. My email, personal home email address is Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, at mtelecom.net. So Knight at mtelecom.net. So if you think of something else, about tonight, uh, feel free to send it off to me. Thanks very much. Have a great evening. Thank you. Person, I don't want to feel. No, it's good.